If it wants to go live, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. It's Thursday. It's Corn Roof pregame. Hey, I, I, I feel like I have not officially said this. I've hit going around it. Hey, will you marry me? Do I have to answer now? <laughs> um, no, you have time. You you can think about it. You can think about a way to say no without hurting my feelings if you want. Oh Lovely. My God. I'll send you a letter. Just don't <laughs> even. Okay, cool. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Thursday. I somehow made it here. We're all wearing eats except for Samir's. We're in the mail. It's Corn Booth pregame, episode 56. I am uh, wearing number 52 for some reason. Uh, I am here joined by my intern, Mr. Samir. Uh, marketing wizard Hello. looking like he's straight out of a badass movie right now, Mr. Pat Donahue. And looking like he's on vacation down south, Mr. Kevin. <laughs> I was going, like like, I'm going was going like Middle East, not Middle Eastern. That would be a terrible vacation. Uh, Caribbean. <laughs> don't ask me how I mix those two up. I don't know, but Caribbean what kind vacation. Of Caribbean vacation? <laughs> Alapu sandbar. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's in timeout. Pat's in timeout. <laughs> oh my god. It's a cat, bro. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. You can only go up from there. Uh, I mean, Pat, we were talking Maggie's about some. Hat. Pat, we were talking about some tasteful dick before. Yeah, Kevin and I really shouldn't be in the studio for longer than like a couple minutes without us on air. Because like within really like five minutes, <laughs> I try to get him as soon as possible, man. I swear. Within like five. Minutes, within like Kevin five minutes, I show up at my crotch. <laughs> oh my! Oh God. wow, that's amazing here. Yeah, I wish I was there. Honestly, it's a great, great start. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. I know a lot of people do Samir. I got yeah. people in my comments and DMs every day. Kev, make an OnlyFans. Make an OnlyFans. I'm like, nah. Only people well, yeah, that's for are my future wife and Pat. Thanks. Well, you also have to like, you know, uh increase, oh you know, the desire, you know. Because the longer you oh, don't the do desire it, the more people there. are gonna watch it. And when you finally do it, that's the desire, true. it'll be bursting. It'll be bursting with excitement. Uh, literally. And that's figure. true. We we have teased a corner booth only fans for a while now. Yeah. When was the last time we had a uh, pregame without talking about only fans? I feel oh, like this is odd. We're, we're going back to December because it was a holy, it was a holy time of year. <laughs> yeah. But even before that, we still talked about it a little bit. Yeah. I, it's, oh my Lord. We are just degeneracy increased i mean i don't know last night if you guys didn't watch um any of um our boys over at uh craft roof sports shout out to them by the way hilarious show last night mookie I missed scott mookie po- I, I know i missed scott too mookie popped off what a one five a point one five at one point or point one eight uh, he was hang on, rocking let me, hard let me see what the final count was uh give me one second here Mook, I, I think I've come close to that only once because usually I keep myself pretty. I, I get pretty good going here on, on the quarter with pregame, but I don't think I've ever hit a point one eight level of drunkenness. Usually it's somewhere around like a point one four. I've never one. done a breathalyzer. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was gonna say I hope you, I, I've never hit a point one five. Uh, 
Kevin, I know for I've been drunk around you and you and me have both clocked probably over that. <laughs> yeah, um, here is Mookie's final result. Nice. Point wow. one three nine. Your ballots and speech are seriously impaired. All right, first off, if you haven't seen Craft Root Sports yet, check it out. There's their Twitter. Uh, Mookie's speech is always impaired. It does not matter how much he's had to drink. Yeah, he makes me look literate. No, uh, let's <laughs> not go that far. <laughs> Caden just got uh, weak sauce. I think the most I ever drank on the show was um, when Kate was on. Because I felt so oh uncomfortable God. the whole time. <laughs> Pat, I think uh, you only I, got uh, blackout drunk. Yeah, that, that was pretty trash. <laughs> so did I. Also, yes, happy pride. Happy pride. Uh, happy also, pride. Happy shorts, I but yeah, no, um, I don't remember chunks of the episode. I also don't remember chunks of the episode. I went on to Craft Root Sports to scream about how much I hate Coach K. Um, I remember that entirely because I was watching the show and all of a sudden I turn around for five seconds to grab a beer out of the fridge. I look over, there's Kevin's mug in the middle of the screen. I'm like, the fuck just happened? And he's just yelling about something. And I turn the volume up because I had my, I think my Xbox was on louder. It was only in my earbud. I look over, you're yelling about Coach K. I'm just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling today. In case I wanted to know. <laughs> Can you be an alcoholic without being gay, or is it like a mutually exclusive thing? If you're an alcoholic, you are gay. I'm just asking because I I have to see if I have to change my t uh, Tinder settings or anything. I just want to be sure. I think honestly, it's more of um, what you feel comfortable with and how you feel in your heart, kind of thing. Well, I know I love alcohol, so I might have to. Go for men. Um, all right. <laughs> if I'm an alcoholic, I'm absolutely gay. All right, then. Let me just go change my Tinder settings. Get the flag going. <laughs> go full Tony Kornheiser with it. Guys, I think we're really missing the point have... of Pride Month right now. <laughs> okay, first off. No, I um, think no, because this is an important part of, you know, recognizing, you know, our identities and who we are, you know. So we're this all is the whole point of Pride in the right direction. Yeah, I think. And we're all kind of talking about sexuality in a very open and comfortable manner. And like that's something that's really important. I think people should have be able to have these conversations in uh you know a very comfortable way. Yeah, somebody wants okay, to I know Marshall's yours, don't worry. Um also while I was doing that, I forgot I had deleted Tinder, so uh, that's awkward. There you go. Good for um, you, man. I don't have any dating apps on my phone right now. I have good for you. Two? That's very good for you. I mean I, I think two two I don't even remember. I don't, I don't even look they're on like the back of my social media like folder on my phone. I just kind of like, oh look, yeah. I still have oh. these. Yeah, I got I got the folder for my my three. I haven't used them in a while, but like it's like it's yeah. like a lifestyle folder. Uh, the Jared, joke is also for uh, the lifestyle condoms. What's my go to? Jared, what's, your, what's your go to uh, opening line? I don't even know. It's been a while since I got a match. Man, I'm bumming up there right now. I, see, I'm, I usually, I'll see, I'll see, like, I'm usually one of those guys who sends a gif. That's usually my go to. Oh, or that's I'll, that's or nice. Or I'll, quote, or I'll quote something funny as shit that's been either like cycled around Facebook, uh, in, uh, Instagram reels, or TikTok, see if they or, get it. Or he also does the all caps, 10 exclamation points. Go fucking birds. <laughs> and then Only if there's rant. eagles in their profile. And then goes on a rant about why they're going to win the Super Bowl before they finish the because season. Because they are. The so the last person I matched with was named Caroline. My opener was, how do you feel about Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond? Do you think it's had a negative impact on your life? Uh, I never got a response. So... Uh, okay, so that happens. I'm gonna give my opinion on that line. It it takes something they've probably heard a billion times, but it changes it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It makes give has them give you input on it, which I think makes it a little better. I mean, I'm also I'm like atrocious. He meant to say a snack, by the way, but mm. I mean, look, Caden, if I could pull off a a romp him as well as you, I would be saying stuff like that too. But I can't do that. I have to actually put thought into these things. I do. I do. I get a little absurd with it. Oh, really? I a, haven't I, seen your I'm, Twitter. That's shocking. <laughs> right? I'm what you call a, maybe an absurdist Tinder approacher. Uh, I like to do this thing where I send a link for like a very well-known song. Uh, the, the, my primary... I thought that sense was going somewhere else. I <laughs> mean... 
The first string of which being uh, Margaritaville. Like, I'll send a girl a link of Margaritaville, and I'll be like, I just heard this song. It's the best song I've ever fucking heard. Have you heard of this song? And that's just kind of like kind of a crazy thing. And then one time a girl responded like she she was like, oh, wow, check it out. And I was like, wait, no, I'm joking. Of course I've heard Margaritaville. Haven't you not heard Margaritaville You do like before? a litmus test for how smart they are. Nice shot. Oh, yeah, and sometimes I do, sometimes I do uh, what's the – what's the uh, – Use of the World Trade Organization, like what's its function? I like asking girls that just to check. You know? Um, I think I'm if I ever re download a dating app, I'm just gonna go on there and yell at people how the Pina Colada song is the dumbest song ever. Take that back. No, I oh, love that hey. song and the album's good. I listened to the entire album. Okay, I'm album. not talking about the song no. in and of itself, but the premise of the song. Like, oh, hey, no, we're both trying stupid. to cheat on each other. Haha, <laughs> oopsies. That's so yeah, stupid. It's, yeah, it's kind of silly. I mean, didn't but it's, uh, yeah, Enrique it's Iglesias do the same song with Pitbull like 30 years later and it was basically the same really? premise? Yeah. It's called like I like it or something like that. It literally is the same premise. Like they're like, hey, your girlfriend's out of town. Or no, hey, your boyfriend's out of town. My girl's out of town. Let's do this. Have I just missed the whole entire concept of like that song? Yes. Yeah, yeah they cheat on each other. It's like you, it, it's about two people who write in like the classifieds in a newspaper, like, hey. Like, my woman sucks. Like, I'm looking for someone who likes pina coladas, likes getting caught in the dune, or likes, likes getting stuck in the dunes of the Cape, likes getting caught in the rain. Someone replies, and they go back and forth and classify. It's like, hey, we're going to meet in this bar. And then they both go to that bar, and it's each other. And then they're like, oh, wow, like, I didn't know you liked all this stuff. Let's continue. No, you don't continue dating after that. You go, really? Instead of talking to me about the issues, you would just cheat on me? Like, no, we're not doing this. Wow. Um, also, uh, I'm getting text commentary too. Oh God! Uh, tell Jared that gifs are the worst. Who said that one? It's text commentary, so I'm assuming they don't want it in the comments. Tell me later. And first of yeah. all, I don't. I, I don't. Well, first of all, I haven't done that. And the last time I did a text comment, it got me a date. Or no, a gif comment was hysterical. It got me a date. But then after that, the girl was a pill, so I didn't care at that point. But like, yeah, I usually don't do it. Usually, I'll like be like, like I'll, if there's something, no, she, like she just was lame as shit. Uh, basically, if I am on, if I match with a girl, usually I see what's in their profile. If it's something like that, I'll like we'll talk, we'll start a conversation about it. Because you know, I love to hear myself talk. So fuck it, why not? You, <laughs> Kevin, no, you're, you're so right. quiet. <laughs> Kevin, if you put an ounce of liquor in your body, man, you love the camera. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, if you give me any alcohol, I won't shut up. Hey, well, you know. friends. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? I mean, well, we have our fifth member of the Corner Booth crew. He's just kind of chilling right here right now. <sighs> he'll, he'll join the show later when he's in a better mood. Guys, so I've been trying to wrap my head around uh, out-of-the-park baseball. You guys hear about this? What is it? It's like, it's like the most intricate baseball simulation game I, it's on the computer you know let's play this and, show you fucking weenie come no, on it's, no, man, is it it's, it's one of the ones where you don't play do you play the games no you don't play the games okay so it's, it's a managerial games. simulator oh okay yeah, yeah yeah and it's really really complicated I take back the comment and it's so hard and it's but it's really fun i'm getting into it so i started and you could start the day like you could start a game uh like today so i started a game today and as the Yankees, and I'm trying to rebuild the Yankees as quick as I can. I've been trying to trade for Ketel Marte, and uh, it's been not working. <laughs> Get out of my head. <laughs> it's been not working at all. Yeah, I, that, you that, even, the Diamondbacks you, basically have told like teams, like, do not even try trading for him. Yeah, I mean, we it's love not that man. Yeah, they, By the he, way, yeah, yeah, Yankees, like Yankees fans that think we're going to trade for Cattell Marte, it's not happening. Winker's not happening. <laughs> It'd be amazing, but there's just no shot. Like the only, this, this the only player you guys might get for us is Escobar because his contract's at the end of the year. We're not, we're going to try to move him. Also, because we're yeah, probably I mean, going to win. We're probably going to win a total of twenty five games this year, anyway. So who cares? Um, yeah, it's been rough, huh? Oh my god! All right, I, it's a lot of Modelo and Miller like in consumed during these games, man. Holy hell. <laughs> We yeah, were up yeah, eight nothing on the Giants and still fucking blew it. Our bullpen yeah. is basically me, Pat, and Kevin throwing strikes out there. Hey, but also, Gallon's coming off the IR. Yeah, Gallon got slugged today because <laughs> he was cheating. He wasn't cheating. 
It was his first Who'd... pitch off the DL, and he played against a hot lineup. He was going to get killed. Uh, he could use spider attack before going on the DL. Now he can't. Mm, very Dude, interesting. That, that hey, Samir, go check. Go, Samir, you're, uh, you're, after, uh, after the show, go check his RPM, see if the guy can find Zach Allen. I don't know. I doubt Maybe. it because he doesn't throw hard enough for it to be a big deal. He throws like his highest fastball this year was 95 miles an hour, and that was down the middle. Like he's only hit it like twice over 94. So I, I don't see the. Well, yeah, but spin rate stops with curveball, stops with a changeup. His best pitch. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I it don't helps. Think, it's not. I, I'm say, I'm thinking he was more in the. I don't really use it, but I remember, I love Trevor Bauer's interview by the way when he literally stuck the ball to his fucking hand. I was yeah. crying when I saw that. I was like, you kidding me? This dude has no chill. I, I just, I don't know. If Galen got busted for it, fuck it. I don't care. It's just like, we're, we, we suck anyway. Just trade Escobar to the Yankees for uh, some prospects and call it a day. But yeah, that video was not spider tech. I know. It was rosin and sweat. I saw the video. I was yeah, laughing my ass off. Because it was Nomar talking to him. It was, it was, I was, I was hysterical. It's so mm-hmm. stupid that they banned that. Oh, by the way, can I, I just say how much I love Trevor Bauer's logo for his like his brand? He is, it's yeah, it's, it's tacky, but it's kind of cool. It's nice for like a sport for like an athlete. That's kind of like the thing you gotta do. Yeah, I mean, some of these like guys, a, some of these guys have just the dumbest fucking logos. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I'm take a look pulling at it. it up right now because Trevor yeah, Bauer logo. Oh, uh, it doesn't come up. Bauer outage. Yeah, you got power out. That's nice. It's a little B. It's a little B with the exclamation or with the electrocution thing. Lightning bolt. That's what I should have said. Man, he really can't grow out his hair. That's that's for one. Also, for anyone looking, why I didn't pick this one is because it's tiny. Yeah, it's small. Um, So yeah, so there's the power outage. So I guess Jared died all of a sudden. I think he's getting his cat from. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Sorry, but I, I I got challenged on Twitter to do something. So, boom. Oh. Live and in person, the biggest pain in my ass on this planet. Even though he's adorable and I love him dearly. Yeah, we were fearing he had bladder issues. I hear. Oh my that's god! Awesome. Why did you? Okay, yeah. He's <laughs> he's fine. No trip to the vet needed. He just grumpy. Well, as well, you know, I think when someone has a, has even a small concern about their bladder, everyone should be praying for them. So he's a, I was shot, just he's to a small child. We are playing high fives now. Okay, we're playing high fives. Apparently, can so we get I, like people? Can we get ghosts like in the actual like corner booth logo, like curled up in the booth? I mean, you talk to Big Marcus, you might be able to put that in there. Ghost is like his little buddy in the mornings because they're the only ones up at five a.m. So, uh, him and Ghost are like best friends. So yeah, yeah. So uh, so Maggie challenged me. So here we go. Here is here is uh, and yeah, Maggie says she loves you, buddy. You're a little lady killer, I know. Every, all, <laughs> all right, buddy. You're gonna go uh, just do whatever you want over there on the side desk. There you go. I thought you're about to just drop him on the floor. <laughs> like, no, hey, I, buddy, have an L- I have an L shaped desk down here. So basically, he kind of just does what he wants, and I kind of just let him do whatever. Like the other day, we we're recording, and he literally was chomping on a. A notebook for about 10 minutes. I was like, I'm not even going to attempt to try to discipline that. You're good, pal. Here's something I want to bring up baseball related. Uh, so, yesterday I was watching the Yankees game, and uh, I'm not going to share my screen. I mean, maybe I will share my screen, but Ross Stripling, pitcher for the Blue Jays, this was, I think, the seventh inning or something. Mm-hmm. He was pitching well against us. Then there's a ground ball to third base. Third baseman picks it up, overthrows the first baseman, and Ross Strickman loses his mind on the mound. He goes, ah, and he starts screaming at the third baseman. Why'd you make that throw? Uh, the next batter, Gary Sanchez, they pinch hit, hits a two-run bomb. That is <laughs> karma. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Did, I will did you say- see what he said about it, though? Yeah, he said he was embarrassed. He was set, upset about it. Okay, so I'm not going to – okay, so I got an embarrassing story here. I actually did that in high school. Shocker. It was only a double I gave up, though. Jared um, taking sports too seriously? It no, was in competitive high school baseball, but yeah, sure. Um, I was I'm, I was a middle reliever. I didn't really have that much energy. Like I didn't have much like, like distance throwing the ball. I, I had two innings max usually because I just would throw all my body to every pitch. I had a kid 3-2, walked him, ticked his hell, two outs. 
I get their best hitter to ground out on a first pitch swing. My shortstop sits back, waits for the ball to get to him on a slow roller, and just whip like tries to over, tries to throw as hard as he can at the end. And he was about a half a second late on the throw. I turned off the mount and fucking screamed at him in front of his parents. I was so angry at him, and I felt horrible afterward because the next play I hung a curveball and the kid literally just cranked it. And also, um, Kevin, you can literally go jump off a, a cliff right now onto some sharp rocks. <laughs> so uh, what I'm hearing is, is you got instant karma. Oh yeah, no, I hung a curveball and got absolutely the ball got absolutely smoked by like their worst hitter in the lineup. I was so mad. <laughs> I was like literally like just like I just went on I got a, I uh I got a fly out I think on the next pitch and I walked to the bench and I said I'm not playing the rest of the game. <laughs> Damn. Well you know, all right, Madden twenty two cover. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. Since our viewership yes. has dropped in half since we started talking about baseball and Jared started talking about high school sports. Oh, uh, here's the Madden twenty two MVP edition cover. Ooh, that this is sexy. No, this is horrible. I love it. Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady are the cover athletes. I have some uh, thoughts on this. The, the cover itself is just lazy. Oh, it's totally lazy. I don't hate it, though. You have two of the most marketable stars in the league right now on the cover. Arguably one of the most fun Super Bowls I've watched in a while, except it was I felt bad for Mahomes in that whole game. Um, but the thing is, so I don't like – I hate the cover athlete selection. You're doing a repeat of 20s and 18s cover. Yeah. They're both – quarter if you want to go like the defensive player and offensive player route like they did in madden 10 mm-hmm. with palomalu and fitz fine love that cover. derrick henry aaron donald two offensive oh defense players here that'd be perfect that'd be cool or even like jalen ramsey versus like dk metcalf if you want to get like even more crazy it, or if you want to do two players do teammates on the same side of the ball if you're really that dead set offense. You know, Aaron Rodgers, the reigning MVP, and Devontae Adams. Oh, I'd be fire. Arguably the best wide receiver last season. And I understand they don't know what Rodgers is doing, but they've been planning this one for a while, it seems, because Tom Brady and Patrick Holmes, there are pictures of them at this photo shoot that were have been coming out. It's ridiculous. I hate it. Uh, I don't like repeats. This is the first time in Madden history that we're having – the same athlete, like same position on three covers in a row. Before so, that, you had two. You had Vince Young in 08 and Brett Favre in 09. Other than that, it's been a different position every year until 20, because they went Mahomes 20, Jackson 21. And now we're doing Mahomes and Brady on 20. I hate it. I hate it. Late. It's so stupid. I actually see that point, and I think it's actually – Kevin, you're, you got, you're – I like everything you just said. The funny thing is to me is that it's just it looks like a frat boy rap album cover. Seriously, it looks like I I'm yeah, it kind of does. Place. It looks like like those dudes Brady the Jordan, X Mahomes, like the like the Jordan <laughs> Belfort song. It like it looks like something like that kind of album cover. I was like, what the fuck am I looking at right now? I'm like, this is not is like like the Peyton Hill intro. Peyton Hill's intro was kind of cool. But they could have done a bunch of other shit with it. Like I knew it was yeah, gonna be Brady Brady Holmes the second they saw this, but I'm like, you guys suck. When I saw Peyton Hills, I was like, oh, are they gonna do another one hit wonder? Who was out of the league two years after, not because of age, because of performance? Wow, good for them. Um, also, someone said, When are we gonna give offensive line some love? I think Henry and Luan would be electric. Yes. Or like just have like all the best like offense like have the best five offensive linemen from N- from the NFL like by position like on like the field so like have like oh, who's the best left tackle in the league right now I even think of it right now Bakhtiari um, Bakhtiari uh, have Quentin Nelson maybe one uh like I'll throw my boy in there because you know when uh, Kelsey at center and then like have another guard there and then have right tackle be uh, I don't know who the, who's the best one right now um, I, I, Kelsey's a weird choice. He's been one of the best centers in the league for like a decade. But I, I mean, yeah, I'm just, he's, I just, not now. he's not. I don't know if he's top still five. Top five. Still top five. So but, I know, see he's number five. I just threw that out there because, you know, I got to trust a little my boy. I mean, even Brandon Brooks is still rated as the best guard in the NFL, even though he hasn't played in a year and a half. But I don't know. Um, That's not. Second oh, best. Rate. I was going to say, Quentin Nelson's been the best guard in the league for a while. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not even talking Quentin Nelson because they're opposite guard positions. Brandon Brooks plays right guard, Nelson plays left guard. He's so still one of the best guards. I, so I should have said best right guards, but anyway. Um, yeah, real quick. 
So I think it's not a bad idea for the cover. Because if you guys remember, the Super Bowl story was like, oh my god, goat versus baby goat. And it was just like a dumb headline for so long. Stupid. And of yeah. course they're gonna, of course they're gonna use it as a fucking like like marketing ploy. Like it makes it look like we covered it, like they're dropping a fire rap album. I think it it looks good, it's sexy. Tom Brady always looks sexy. There we go. I I also just hope they don't do what they did last year with every EA game. They pick the same template for every cover. Like yeah. Madden yeah, 21 so, had so annoying. The whole Lamar Jackson with that stupid thing. border. God. Uh, Chell was Ovi with that dumb border. It's so annoying. And they overlap and just throw shit. Out. It's just bad graphic design. Yeah, it's terrible. It's sloppy. So what is the do they have any idea what they're gonna do for the uh normal edition, like the regular like one that us schmucks are gonna buy if we buy Madden? Um Andy Dalton. <laughs> yes. I think they should do I I think they should do that actually, Pat. That's a good idea. Uh just do different athletes. Uh here's a mock up of what it could be, by the way, that I saw on Google. Um, that one. I don't hate that, honestly. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, first off, this would be fire. By the way. Oh, that'd be great. I'd love that. I also think they should do something like that. Like, the uh, do like a Legends player for a, like the GOAT edition every year. That'd be great. Also, I hate this, but I think Derek Henry should have been on the title on the cover i think the oh, yeah. uh crown's a nice touch everything else sucks they could have just taken this with the crown and the king henry blown it up made that the entire cover i hate but, ea sport <laughs> yeah join the club Shout like, out to especially the doing two players who have been on the cover in the past four four maddens it just continues to perpetuate the belief that Madden is a lazy game that minimal efforts put into. Because it is. Well, yeah, Madden is, 21 though. also got one of the lowest ratings of a sports game has ever gotten before, which I thought was hysterical. Yeah, and then now he's like, oh, shit, we have to fix it. Also, um, bring back the fan vote. Oh, hell yes, please. That was awesome. I love how like Michael Vick lost to Peyton Hillis. That may, It's still the funniest thing to me. I don't hate that because Mike, first off, it's a hysterical thing. But also, Michael Vick's already been on the cover for. I don't want to see a lot of repeat covers. I would have loved to see it because it would have been like the pinnacle of his, like, kind of, I, I want to say redemption, but like, you know, his comeback. Also, he's an Eagles jersey, so I mean, I, I would love that. But how many Eagles players have been on the cover? I Mike Nab? Mick Snap, that's it. I call him Mick Snap because he got injured all the time, but Fair. He's like Sweet. one of my he talk about a guy he used to love as a kid who literally as I got older I hated more and more. Like I still despise McNabb. I saw like I saw him tweet something out the other day. I was like, I fucking hate you, man. I used to idolize you as a kid and I can't stand your like presence. We only have Odell, I think. We don't have anyone else. Yeah, Giants? you don't. Uh, yeah, you just no. have Odell. We never have as much players. I don't like, think there's that's... ever been a. I, there's never been a single Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> yeah, let's keep it that way. Jesus Christ. Unless, just... unless Emmett Smith in the late nineties. That's all I can think of. Uh, no, up until two thousand two thousand one version of the game, but from nineteen eighty nine to the Madden two thousand, uh, it was John Madden. Okay, so there we go. No Dallas Cowboys. And then it went Eddie George. I had a list open earlier. It was Culpepper was on one of them, too. I think Culpepper was 2002. Marshall Falk was 03. Or off, no, Falk was 01. Nope. Madden 2001 was Eddie George. He was the Eddie first George. athlete on the cover. Okay, Eddie George. I know Falk was one of them because I my uncle had the game. I used to play with him all the time. Eddie George was 2001. Dante Culpepper was 2002. Marshall Falk was 2003. Yes. Everyone knows who was on it in 2004. Mr. Vic. Ray Lewis was 05. Donovan McNabb was 06. Mm -hmm. Sean Alexander was 07. Vince Young was 08. Brett Favre was 09. Palomalu and Fitz were 10. Drew Brees was 11. Also, fun fact, the first white guy on the cover. Hmm. Uh, that was the year Peyton one was Super Bowl, right? Year uh, after, no. yeah. No, it was the two, Madden 11 was 2010 season. 
That was the year after winning the Super Bowl. Didn't they win in 2009? Yeah, but it was the 2010 season they he was on the cover. So, oh, I thought you were saying the season after they won the Super Bowl. That's why I said it was he was on the cover the season after. No, the like Bowl. they the cover came out in ten and then they won in eleven. I was like, that's not oh true. oh yeah no, no no that's what I thought you were saying. No, uh, and then Peyton Hillis was twelve. Mm-hmm. Also, Madden twelve was a great game. That was a lot of fun. Impact. Uh, Megatron thirteen. Barry Sanders great. was Madden twenty five, but Adrian Peterson was featured in a lot of the in game graphics and stuff. Fun fact: He was like the uh, Xbox three hundred and sixty version, Xbox One version. It was like the main window. Like once you go into the game, you see. Adrian Unless you Peterson. bought the special edition, which also came by the way with uh, Sunday NFL Sunday ticket for forty dollars, which was a steal. What? Yeah, I got that. I, I bought it. I spent a hundred dollars of my own money that I worked for and got the Sunday ticket edition, so I could watch every game every Sunday while I was in college. It was lit as hell. And then Richard Sherman is on fifteen. And he wanted the whole Legion of Boom, so they're on the main menu screen. Uh, 16, Odell. 17, Gronk. 18, Brady. 19, AB. 20, Mahomes. 21, Lamar. And now 22, Mahomes and Brady. Hmm. I mean, Lamar was a no-brainer last year, obviously because of how good of a 2019 season he had. But this year to me, it should have been a no-brainer. It, Derrick Henry. I'm sorry. This is just stupid. I, I mean, I get the two goats thing, but that should be just it. Like they should make Kent Henry the main cover, at least for the main game, what everyone sees. Because it's just the dude dominate has dominated for what the past what two seasons straight up, like rushing title back to back to back rushing titles, right? Yeah, back to back, two thousand yards this season. He's unbelievable, man. He, his training workouts are also like the funnest things to watch on the planet, too. True. Eh, fuck you, man. Yeah. 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 Man. yeah. EA Sports, you suck, too. I yeah, play out of the park baseball instead. How about that? I'll play the show for a couple hours. Oh, by the way, I'd actually like to bring up a little stat here. Um, history has been made by one of Jared's teams today. It's actually a big, oh, big deal, no. big accomplishment. <laughs> Uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks actually have won 23 straight road games, and that's a new MLB record. So in the history Lost. of baseball, no team has been worse on the road yeah, for a certain stretch than games. Jared's Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, so I'd like to point out, uh, Samir meant lost. Oh, lost. Did I say win? You said yes. lost. Oh, that was stupid. We haven't won a home game since – no, road game since uh, April. Let's just let's all marinate in that little fact there. How about you guys pray for your boy because he's been suffering this year? I know my team wasn't gonna be that good, <laughs> but like I mean, at least play five hundred ball. Fuck, at least make it entertaining for me. Like this is depressing. Nope. Okay, first of all, what did the Diamondbacks ever do to you? They knocked off the Yankees in 0-1. That should earn some running. Oh, nothing. It has nothing to do with the Diamondbacks. It's strictly your suffering. <laughs> yeah, You're it's a nice. horrible just... friend. Sometimes you know that. You hopped on the Pittsburgh bandwagon with reason, but you saw Every three wins with them. Every fandom I have has you a saw, reason. I said you have a reason. You saw the Eagles win a Super Bowl, so you are meant to suffer for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's not on me because I was already suffering when that when was happening, so fuck it. it fun right. fact, the worst year of my life would happen when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. That's hysterical, by the way. That's irony. Really? Okay. We this is not a therapy session. We don't need. Oh, I'm not. I'm not going. I literally am just gonna say fun fact. That's it. No more. No, it's not like Samir because he said really like he wants you to. Samir, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when we. I I go take you out for food because you live literally like that close to me. Take me out for food. Take him on a date. Take him somewhere nice. Maybe let you do a little butt play. Samir, you better dress up. I'll dress up. Madden rookie ratings. Let's do this. I'm hyped. Y'all can plan your date after. All right. We're gonna go start off (laughs) seventeen. Alex Leatherwood, Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, okay. I'm taking the lead on this one. I think they're going to give him like a 68. I think they're going to yeah. they're going to hit this kid low because the whole draft for the next eight picks, everyone was talking about how he was overdrafted. They could have gotten mid second round. Even though Alex Leatherwood is a freak athlete of a tackle, I think the Raiders actually got a good pick there. I think he's going to be one of those hidden gem tackles that got drafted a little later, but the Raiders saw it early. I think sixty-eight. Are we are we doing like initial like preseason like week yes. one? Okay, 
at release, what do you think their range oh, is? Holy shit. Be? 62. Uh, like 62. <laughs> I was gonna go 69. I think they're gonna rate him low. Yeah, I was gonna say somewhere in the 68, 69 region. Uh yeah. Rough. I the highest I think I could see is 71. I just feel like like with with rookies, like that first release, like everyone's super, super low no matter what. Like I unless they're like top five, I feel like everyone's super undervalued. Or at least yeah. they're the top of their position. Yeah. That's the only other way they get it. Uh number 18, Jalen Phillips, Miami Dolphins. Uh solid 70. I was gonna say 71. So yeah, no, I think they're they're gonna reward him for the fact that dude's got a he was the top ranked uh DN on some people's boards. So he's gonna get a little love for that. Yeah, I'm with those rankings. I'm there. I think he'll be hot. I think he'll have a high dev trait though. But his injury ratings gonna be garbage. Yeah, like yeah, 69 star dev. If they're bringing all that back. I don't know. If, uh, I didn't look at like the new Madden for it, but his I injury see. rating is going to be a nice little two, <laughs> probably a solid sixty. Like he's going to have like one of those guys who's going to like make a sack and then hurt his own shoulder. Hope there are no cars on the field. Oof. Well, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, damn it, Kevin. Really? He lived. It's fine. We could, he lived and played football again. It's fine. Uh, Samir, did you predict? Yeah, I was going to say I agree. Seventy-one. I could see in the optimistic range 72, but that's about it. Hell of a player, though. 19. I don't know. I, I think this is wrong, but Jamin Davis. It's ja- it's Yeah, it's Jamin. My buddy's little brother is the same name. All right, good, because that is the best way to pronounce that name. Jamin Davis. I'm going to go a 67 because this was a reach, but it yeah. was – a position grab. They knew they wanted middle linebacker. Micah Parsons off the board. So was um, Collins. So they went with the guy that was the next best player inside linebacker, and they went and got Jamie Davis. Great coverage athlete, but he's well, on the slight side. I don't know. I think um, sixty-eight. They're gonna they're gonna hit him hard here. They're gonna like really like make you feel that okay, we overstretched on a on a linebacker because he's a second round rated guy. And like most draft boards, I think like ninety five percent of them. Yeah, I I think sixty eight. I think he's gonna have a good size and athleticism grades or ratings, but I think they're gonna hammer him on the actual football side of things because he doesn't have a lot of starts. He has eleven starts. Great coverage though. Was he the one of the ones who had a higher coverage stat? Yeah, I mean uh, he. I don't know. He's fast. He, you know, he he creates turnovers. I think these all be his biggest pluses. Uh, um, so I'm going to give him, I think, a 69 because I think when you can impact the game in kind of a big way like that, maybe you'll get a, you know, a little bit of, you'll be favored by the the, the matting rating to people. I'd like to meet one of these matting ratings. People. Yeah, I would. It goes to their head. I saw one of them on Hard Knocks once. He was a he was talking on an interview. He was a weird dude. I'm sure he was. Oh, these guys are odd be guys. Weird. But the job application for it is honestly like the job application. I've seen it before. It's honestly not the like the what this thing entails. You get flown to like training camps. You basically just have to watch these games and watch these practices. I'd love to do that. Oh no, I, I honestly Michael fill out the application tomorrow. I punch out of work. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, worst thing you do is say no. Uh, I'll throw 67. But I also want to know, like, do the rating adjusters, like, watch, like, rookie tape? Like, yeah. Okay. Like, they watch, like, like when college they were, tape, too. That's what I was talking about. Is like, do they watch, like, their uh, college tape? Then, like, taking this into consideration going into, like, like training camp preseason. The what do you think they got like... really, really serious about, like, the Maddings ratings where they started? Oh, probably when, like, the internet exploded. So, like, the Twitter age. Hmm. Interesting. When like they update when like the second roster started being a thing, because like yeah. what like Madden 07, like it didn't matter like once you're starting rating, that's all you had for the entire year. So like, let's just say a player like has a breakout season 07, it don't mean shit because the Madden rating at their preseason was a 62. So you're playing your body, he's gonna be cheeks. 
Mm. All I right. Uh, All right. Number twenty, Kadarius Tony. Uh, Samir, you can go first. I mean, listen, I'm going to be generous and give him give him a seventy three because I think he's explosive, has really good hands, and is very fast. Uh, his physicality, I think, is going to be a big knock on his game. But you know, I'm optimistic. I think he's a really talented player, talented, explosive player, uh, and under like he he's a nice underling to like the top tier of rookie wide receivers who are all at like high 70s i think we have or yeah 80s. we had we had uh i think last episode we had what was it smith waddle and chase were all up in the high 70s so yeah that makes sense i'm going to go with a solid 69 i was kidding 70 um i think they're gonna screw him over on some like fundamental stuff um which I don't agree with. A lot of think- his big plays were off of screen passes. There was not a lot of route running done. There was not a lot of, like, everything was very short, quick stuff. It, Florida's offense is basically how sh- quick can Kyle Trask get the ball out because he's garbage as a human being, as a quarterback. He's probably a nice <laughs> wow, guy. you went straight for the human being part. Uh, I, know. I was going to say, I was like, what? <laughs> Why I'm so used to shit. I'm so used to shitting on um your boy from Auburn, Kevin. I'm sorry. Um ah, Bo Nix. Yeah, I'm little sorry. Absentee father himself. <laughs> also, by the way, check out the shirt in our link. It's a great t shirt. The first official tailgate in the quad T. I fully endorse it, by the way. Um, because I have buddies who went to Auburn who actually know Bo Nix. He's a scumbag. Um, anyway, so uh yeah no I think Tony's gonna be like a sixty nine seventy they're gonna really screw him on the route running you know because his his physical stats can be good his biggest problem is his route running and all of the strategic stuff is gonna be shaky because most of his routes he ran in college were like screen passes and quick slants so shout out to Mike Thomas <laughs> yeah he's gonna be a seventy I mean I again I see it as a thing where it's like he's gonna be like sixty nine sixty eight. And then, like, by, like, week four, they're going to, like, adjust him to, like, low 70s. He's going to make one big play, and Madden's going to, like, adjust it. Like, they're going to have the whole yeah. Chad Ochocinco thing on, on Instagram and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that Those are fun. I like those. I love those. Those are solid. Like, nice. Good for you. Uh, 21, Quiddy Pay. Oh, they're going to overhype this dude all the way. You think so? Oh, yeah. He was the highest rated like DN on most people's boards. They're going to give him like a 73, 74. Yeah, I, I, say, I was about to say the same exact thing. I said 73 or 74. I'm going to go 74 because Madden overhypes people's draft boards too. So I'm, I'm going to go 74 for Quiddy Pay. It's going to make no sense why. He's going to be sucking actually in the game, but he's going to have a 74 rating. 70 with like star dev. Yeah, I don't know. 71. <laughs> Throw out a number. I, I I like trying to be generous with these later round guys, but I know that Madden's not. Which yeah, is annoying not. because I think I, I think that uh we should be viewing first and second rounders as more impact players. Which is Oh no, they're off the rip ready to go. That's why I love co- college football has developed so much as a game now that like it used to be just the first round you'd have development guys, but now in the second round you have like legitimate starters, possible Hall of Famers, going in the second th- second round, possibly even third. So, yeah, I'd like to point Absolutely. out also yeah. again these are not later round guys; these are late firsts. Yeah, big difference. Twenty two, Caleb Farley. I'm gonna go higher than usual. I'm gonna go seventy two. I think he's gonna get a decent rating because he was a freak at Virginia Tech, but his injury rating is gonna be awful. It's going to be like a conditional 72. Like he's going to have a good off the rip, like ready to go corner rating, but he's going to get injured if you play a franchise. I'm going to give him 75, 76. Okay. Some okay. people thought he could have been the best corner off the board, but his injuries got them, made him fall. He's good. He made plays at Virginia Tech. He was a great corner, just couldn't stay healthy. So, yeah, his injury rating will be in the. 70s or 60s because for some reason they have injury ratings very high for injury prone players but he's gonna get hurt if you use him in franchise mode like i feel feel like if a guy's injury rating is like a zero he's gonna literally like catch a snap and like break his neck (laughs) (laughs) all right well before you play your next madden game we'll give your quarterback a zero rating hey 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 hey, no wide receiver i got a bounty on one of them 
I'll, 70, I'd say 70. Also, I can't believe we're almost at the two-year mark for our league. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, we've been kicking ass, <laughs> sort of. We have Mr. One Super Bowl in 30 years. Shut up. I made Damn, the, that's I, rough. One Super I Bowl? I lost to yeah, Kevin cool, last whatever. week. I lost to Kevin last week on a – I literally drove down the field, had a touchdown there. I underthrew my tight end, and he w- he had a walk-in touchdown. Okay, I don't like talking about this Madden League. On I don't either. Because no one cares. However, Jared, you ran literally the same play for most of that drive. It was working. <laughs> what did you expect to happen? I know. Ball placement was shit, though. But anyway, moving on. Samir? And this is for Caleb Farley, am I correct? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to give him a 70. I think he's, I don't know, he he's big. He is has good zone coverage. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think he'll he'll be a solid, and I think he'll be a solid player for the Titans as, as a corner in that secondary, and he'll be a big upgrade. And I think sooner or later, we could see probably towards the end of the year him being in the mid to high 70s. All right, 23, Christian Derisaw. I'm split on this one. This one's tough. It's always I'm tough. I'm just going to give him like a 70 and move on, honestly. I'll, I'll roll with that. I'll give him a 71. Yeah, let's agree all roll. agree. Let's just agree. Because I think he's better now. It's Leatherwood, at least off the rip. But like, he was a steal at 22. That's way for I mean. All right. Pat, 24, the- Najee Harris. 78 overall. Yeah. I'll go with that. I'll go 78, 77. Like, he's going to have a great rating off the rip. No question. Best running back so. in the class. Most blocking, complete running back in the class. Blocking's going to be good. Catching stats going to be good. Everything. I mean, his speed, he might only get like what? Like, have like a 90, 91? Yeah, it will be in the 89, 91 range. He's faster than that, but he didn't show it off very often. He always had a lot of his runs, always felt like very side to side, zigzaggy kind of. There's not a lot of breakaways where he's just like flying past people. But I mean, yeah, he's going to be a solid running back. 78, 70, uh, 78, 77, nine, yeah. whatever. 76, 77, I think is, is what I'll say. Again, I feel like they don't do anyone justice. Yeah, I'm going to go high 70s. I think 78, maybe even 79 here. I think people have really been hyping up Najee. I think he's a great player. I think he deserves the hype. And he has kind of had all the intangibles with the size, size, speed. I think the hands are underrated. And once we get into training camp, we're going to all recognize the hands are underrated. We see he's a hard ro- worker. He knows he's a hard worker. I think these are all things that the Madding ratings people will take into account and be like, all right, this kid's good. Uh, another thing that they factor into Madding rings too much is he looks good doing things. Yeah, he does. And they love, like- they love doing that. You could be the fastest guy on the field, but if people – like there's guys who are fast and they don't look fast. If you're one of those guys, they will not give you a high speed rating. But if you're like Dre Archer who like – if you've ever seen his college tape, it's incredible. Just watching him just like separate like the yard is just – like it looks like the Red Sea. Then yes, you're going to get like a 99 speed rating. It, you have to be basically like the most impressive player like – Sorry, my boss texted me. Um, the most like like impressive player on tape. So Kevin's completely honest about it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Travis Etienne, twenty five. Way overdrafted, but a very solid running back. Because I f- I kind of feel he is very close to Najee Harris, but the blocking component, the blocking component is the biggest thing. Um. Also, go- Najee's much stronger. Oh yeah, no, but you know. I would argue Travis is more explosive and straight line, but that's about it. Um, I give Travis Etienne a seventy-five. I think they're gonna, they're gonna give him the Clemson the Clemson nod. He's gonna get the the benefit of the doubt here. He's gonna get the same dev trade as Najee. They want the like the who's better, Najee or Travis Etienne theme this year. So I, I think he's gonna be very close. Probably same dev trade, higher speed, less strength. You know. I, yeah, I think I, it depends. Oh, sorry. Go somewhere. I, I just think that uh, there's a lot of versatility here where, you know, when there's the piece about 
Am, am I frozen? Oh no. Okay. No, when there's a hype piece about you know him taking steps. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I you know, know I'm just say, gonna go. Uh, he's gonna be a 74 if he plays running back. If they put him mm-hmm. at wide receiver, he's gonna be a 71, 72. I said 68, 70, 68, 70. They they really do the drop off for position switches. They want him yeah. to do well. True. So I think yeah. they'll give him. I think 71 is probably closer if he's wide receiver, but yeah, if he's running back, 74. I could agree with that. 74 running back, and then maybe 70 at wide receiver. I don't think he's going to be a wide receiver. I think he'll be rated like uh, a really good pass catching running back, which will put him in the 74 range. I will say this is the this is the pick that pissed me off the most from the draft because I yeah, want horrible ETN. pick. I am so mad. I want ETN to go to a team that had no running back. I want him to maybe like sit like Los Angeles Chargers to trade up to go get him because him and Austin Eckler would be like a deadly duo. Because he needs to get touches, but the problem they need is James, a big guy there. They yeah, need but a big guy. The problem there. is James yeah, Rock- Eckler and Etienne will be the same kind of player too. Yeah, true. I mean, but it makes I, no sense. I sent him there. I was throwing a name out there. He needed a running back anyway, or even send the Buffalo. It'd be awesome. I would have loved to Etienne and Buffalo with a uh, Zach Moss and Singletary. With that amount of explosiveness out of the back, I love it. Uh, but you know, oh, it's just pick annoyed the fuck out of me. Come on, fucking right. Jack, fucking Jaguars. Greg Newsom, the second. I actually love this kid. I'm going to give him a higher, uh, as high a ranking as you gave Fairly. I'm going to give him a 75. He does everything right. That He's is not, not happening. He is a. They love the Browns. Madden love the Browns this year, so they're going to give him a high rating. Uh, 74, 75. I think he, he does his right. His into everything on the field. He does everything good. A couple things. Great, but nothing exceptional. So he's going to get a, a rating like that. Like 74, 75. 69. Nice. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> call it. Call so he's the best player in this draft class. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give him a 71. Yeah, I'm going to go 70. I, I I think he's one of those players I think is that's a little underrated and has a lot of intangibles that'll come together and just be a, he'll be decent off the bat. All right. Um 27, Rashad Bateman. 68. I think he is a he's going to have a good he's going to have a high dev trait but limited tape, injury concerns. Playing no big, playing the Big Ten with a weird offense. I'm gonna say 68. Yeah, I can oh. I can get Ben 68. I'm gonna give him a 70. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little higher. I think 71. I think he's, I think he has r- really good tape. I think he's really talented, size, speed, great hands, great deep threat. Uh, I feel like I'm a little overrating guys. We're rating guys a little higher than you guys today, but you know I'm just in a good mood, I guess. A generous Samir. All right. 28, Peyton Turner. I'm giving him a 67. No, where is he out of? I forget. Like, I think it was the first draft. I was like, why? Who? Yeah, I'm giving him a 67 because he was a like a mid to late second round guy. And they I'm just, get- the Saints just took him. Over Greg Rousseau, which still makes me laugh my ass off. Um, Fucking Saints. Um, sixty-five. I think he's gonna be the. Fr- I think he's gonna be one of the busts this year. Houston's never really developed anybody good off defense. I mean, except for maybe Stanford route, but that's going back ten years. What? Yeah, I'm gonna go sixty-seven here. You know, I miss I, somebody I, off Houston. Hey, hey, hang on, he is off Houston. Hang on to me, Cameron Jordan. Ah, there we go. No, he's from Cal. I thought. Oh, you were talking about you said the Saints haven't really drafted. Uh, no, I'm talking anymore. to the University of Houston. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I interpreted it as. Okay, Jeez. never mind. I was very confused. Yeah, no, no. I was like, wait a minute. I have not heard a good player come out of University of Houston in a long time on the defensive side of the ball. Offense, yeah, but defense. Ew. Um, yeah. Continue. Sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say sixty-seven. Like he's not, yeah. Nothing about him is like really excites me. I mean, he, he, I think he's just really rough around the edges. I don't know. Maybe he'll have a decent dev trait, but uh, other than that, I don't. I don't know. Well said, Optimus. 
Yeah, maybe that like yeah. 66, 67 range. It's a toss up. Cruz just with the pain the pain picture he always tweets every time. <laughs> I still have the funniest picture, a video of Cruz on my phone. Uh, we need to see this. It was him during the draft. I'll send it to you um, later. Yes, I- his girlfriend is a, is like the best for Twitter content, by the way. Oh my god! <laughs> um. All right. To what? I hate my ring light. Uh, twenty nine. Eric Stokes. Eric Stokes. Yes. Picked by the Green Bay Packers, you know, instead of an offensive weapon for <laughs> right, of Aaron course. Rodgers. Uh, 71. Yeah, they're going to reward his speed. I'm going to say 70, 71. He's also a good corner. He played well in the SEC. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, he, I, I was very pissed too. off he didn't fall in the second round. I could see him going at like 72. Yeah, no one could cover anyone on Bama. So <laughs> it's not Eric Stokes' fault that Alabama was a wagon this year. Also, uh, we're going to talk about this comment Also, they're saying um, single Terry Singleton. I don't care. The dude from LSU. You mean Devontae Smith kid? Yeah, they're calling him the next great SEC Oh, corner. my Man. God. His, 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 his tape is awful. Yeah, Devontae Smith took his lunch money on the way to the end zone. So, please, let's not. Dallas, Dallas, draft him, please. Dallas, please draft him. <laughs> you know the Eagles are probably going to draft him, right? No, we won't. We don't draft, we don't draft skinny corners. What the hell is this shit? You know they're going to. That's his karma right there. Yeah, probably. Um, we won't be. We, no, we won't have a high enough pick for him. He's going to go top five. I don't think he's going to go top five. I don't know. Maybe. I. I. I anyway, keep going. I believe. It's what are y'all giving for Eric Stokes? Stokes. I yeah, say I'm 71. giving a seventy. Yeah, 71. I'm giving a seventy. He's going to be a high. He's going to have a high rating because his speed and his man coverage are going to give him a lot of. Uh, Georgia runs man to man, right, Kev? I can't remember. I don't know what the fuck Kirby's doing out there. I have not watched the Georgia football game in like eight months. Yeah, so basically, yeah. what I figured out from Georgia football is they will run whatever they should in the first half, and then the second half they're going to switch and run the other thing. It's just that Georgia trait. If you play in, let's the state say of Georgia, they're doing well. Let's say they're doing well, doing man against team. Second half, oh, let's try zone out. We're doing well, with man. Let's see if zone works better. If you are from the state, lose. if you are from the state of Georgia, just just mail it in the second half. There's no point. You're, you're going to choke it away anyway. <laughs> well, maybe they pass that uh, choke trait though onto the onto the city of Philadelphia. Just for, just nice. for the just for the Sixers because Ben Simmons may have maybe the Dude, worst. That over, was insane. Most most overhyped. Can we talk about that after this? By the way, the most overhyped oh, NBA player of all time. Oh my god, I want to talk to some NBA. But let's keep going. Sure. All right, number thirty, Greg Rousseau. 72 with a superstar <laughs> dev rating. <laughs> because you know oh, what? He was bold. a top-ranked defensive end for like half the draft offseason. I will stick by this. He's yeah, going 68, to be a, bud. He's going to be a freak of nature. 72. No questions asked. 68. 72. Superstar You know dev. why? His awareness is going to be zero after having one good season and then opting out. Yeah, no, he's a fucking idiot. But he's, yeah, still they're gonna jump he's, he's, he's still zero, a freak athlete. And they put so much rate, like so much weight in this awareness rating. He's gonna be like a sixty-eight superstar dev, though. I will roll with that. Superstar I'll dra- dev. I'll draft him in a fantasy in, in a Madden league. Fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, I'm Jared's gonna, go gonna draft him in a here. Madden league. No, here's how it's gonna go. Jared's gonna draft him in a Madden league. User him the entire season. He's gonna get up high ratings by the end of the year. And he's gonna go. See, I told you he was good. <laughs> I, That's I how do, it will go. Yeah, defensive end is one of the only divi- uh, defensive positions I actually use her really well. So, um, I don't even need to clean blitz him. All right. Anyway, moving on. Nobody cares about Madden. All right, Samir, Patrick. Yeah, I said sixty nine. Yeah, six like sixty eight, sixty nine. One of the two. I don't I think it's your lack 75. of faith disturbing. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Um, Odafi away. Thank you. Who? And we'll ask the broadcast, we'll ask the broadcast boys. That was a reference to them, but okay. Uh, am I pronouncing that horribly wrong? Or... No, you're not. I just don't know who the fuck this guy is. No, uh, I don't really know. 
Oh, he's the uh, crash rusher out of uh, Penn State, right? Yeah. Yeah, really impressive, like, as an athlete, but he's just, at, like, I think where he's going to get docked is a lot of, like, the pure football kind of pass rushing ratings. I'm going to give him a 67. 64. Ooh. I'm going to give him a 68. They rate these end of first round guys low, like much lower than beginning of first, but they still don't like giving them a super low rating. Yeah. I see like a 66. That was an end of third, end of second round guy. They're going to give him a 64 to me. Right. Uh, they reached in on. Yeah, but it man puts too much stock in where you were taken, not uh, just the I kind know. of player. I know. Uh, Joe Tryon. Okay, this guy had a really awesome tape, by the way. Did anybody else notice that? Like when they yeah, played the like, Pac 12. I, I know. Top I know. Bottom, the second worst Power Five conference. When you say ACC. I'm going to come up to Masters and hit you. Um, <laughs> I do want to see a fight, a Kevin Jarrett fight. I would not end well for Kevin. <laughs> yeah, okay, bud. <laughs> I oh, so, would bet yeah. money on myself, but anyway. Corner booth fight, let's go. See, here's why oh, I think I win. Fight club, let's do it. <laughs> I think Jared would feel bad because we're friends. I think Jared would go, I don't want to injure him too much. I don't care. Oh, no, the second you take it, no, because you take a cheap shot, and then i just be like, no, all right, all bets are off. I, no, you hit me a hard enough where I'd be like, okay, this kid's really trying to kick, hit, kick my ass right now. Okay, it's, all, it's off. I'm good. Yeah, because you fucking bought me this jersey, dude. Shout out to my boy, Jeffrey. I would just run around until you tired yourself out, fat ass. All right, I can't Joe run you. Uh, I'm going to give him like a 69. 67. I agree with the I agree with the guy with the really sketchy hat. Hmm. Yeah, sketchy hat, man. Fuck is my friend? I wanted to I'm say fine. something live, but I'm not going to. I'm feeling like 68. I'm going to go 68 here. I'm I'm feeling like a seventy. I'm feeling generous for some reason. Wow. But, yeah, that's uh. There you go. That's, that's, that's it. Round. That's the first round. Yeah. Now, wow. Do you agree with our ratings? Do you not? Well, you have a chance to prove it. When the rookie ratings come out for Madden, DM us, tweet at us, pick three. From now until then, the minute they are released, contest is over. Whoever gets the three, the most right. We're not doing closest. You have to get it exactly on the nose. The winner gets this great Manscaped, the ultra smooth package. Comes with a crop exfoliator, crop gel, and the crop shaver with five replacement blades. And we'll send that out to you. Pick three rookies. Give us what you think their rating will be. If you win, get all three right. You're first off a genius. Second off, you get some cool stuff. There you go. Yeah, uh, you guys should try to take advantage of this. You know, there's you don't really get an opportunity. Not many times, like in your life, someone will go up to you and be like, "Hey, all you have to do is type a few things, and you can get like clean balls." So that's like pretty cool. I mean, also, the girl you made at the bar will thank you. <laughs> and us, you have to. There is a user agreement here. You have to tell her, or him, or them, whatever they identify. Yeah, whatever, that, whatever, whatever floats your boat. That your clean package is thanks to the people at Manscaped and the Corner Booth Podcast. Those great gentlemen and that weird guy with a weird hat on the Corner Booth Podcast. You know, it's probably the only time I'd like to take credit for somebody's clean balls. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. It's the only time I will ever help take credit for that. Oh my God. No, I'd like to think that I like encourage a culture of clean balls. So if all of my friends have clean balls, I'd like to take, you know, credit for the, for me trying to foster that kind of environment. <laughs> encourage a culture. I, Pat, I think you should culture. also take credit. I think you should also take credit for my clean balls when I show you my crotch in the pre-show meeting. Yeah, you know, it's um it's always a pleasant surprise when you get a crotch shot from Kevin, you know? <laughs> You're just yeah. you're, you're sitting down. I have, <laughs> I have some people who would agree with you, but a lot of people who would disagree with you. Yeah, my screw I'm might sure. have cracked at that point. <laughs> uh, you know, it's <laughs> a lot. 
All right, y'all want to talk some NBA? Oh, please oh, let absolutely. me let me go off. All right, talk some NBA. Jared, what do you think? Motherfucking Lamelo Ball. Oh my god! You thought Anthony Edwards was going to win Rookie of the Year? You know what? Honestly, the way ESPN was kissing his ass, probably not. And honestly, the fact is, like a lot of guys who have been better off than the guys who won Rookie of the Year in their classes, like uh, like Michael Carter Williams won, but Giannis Antetokounmpo was in this class. Um. Mac well, one. Uh, hey, well, I'm not comparing them. I'm just saying. Possibly. You know, okay. What about Zion and Ja? Yeah. Um, Who's having a better career? Who won Rookie of the Year? Listen, last year Zion also Zion literally is more injury prone than McNabb, Carson Wentz, and uh, I don't know, name another injury prone player. Put oh Josh Hamilton put together. Um, that man needs to lose. I, that man needs to realize like he's got to lose some weight. Um, just he's so Wait, muscular. I, I just don't. Josh Hamilton, he was injury prone for the entire first half of his career in Tampa Bay. Okay, well, fine. I was right about that. I'm not. I'm <laughs> anyway. I was just saying, say, like you're you're saying because he had an alcohol addiction. No, the alcohol addiction was on top of that. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's where my issue came Kevin, from. That's called it's a like, stack what? on a stack on a stack. Also, I, drugs weren't great either. Um. All I will say about this is that I got tweeted out by some dude who was like, oh, look at all these stats, right? I'm like, also, let's be honest. At one point, Anthony Edwards was by himself on that team. Malik Beasley had a hamstring injury. Cat was injured. D'Lo was injured. And this dude was just kind of like, right, I'm just going to go dunk on people and have fun. Dude hits a three in LeBron's face and then rubs it in him. And rub it, like, like makes him known. Lamella Ball to me. Is, is a product of ESPN overhype, one. Two, um, the fact that people on it's, the Twitter beef between the two of these people is hysterical. I love it. Like, like, like uh, one of, uh, I think one of Aunt Edwards' trainers or one of his boys, either way, was like tweeting out, like he got robbed and Aunt retweeted, goes 100. And I'm like, and so did Cat. And they're like, like, all right. And like, Lame like some dude tweeted, like, oh, Lamella and Hire says everything points. I'm like, yeah, but also Lamelo had like a better team around them from eighty percent of the season, and also played an easier conference. But you know, who's paying attention to that? Oh, me. Yeah, I am. Um, Anthony Edwards will have a better career than Lamelo Ball. I will put a hundred bucks on it right now. I'm talking Anthony Edwards will probably make at least a couple All Star games where Lamelo Ball might win one or two. Ball ceiling is a lot lower. This is the same I've, every year. There's always two. There's always two main prospects. One guy has a lower ceiling, but is more consistent. And one guy has a higher ceiling. 98%, 95% of the time, with the exception of Ja and Zion, because they both have super high ceilings. The guy, the guy who has the higher ceiling usually has a better career. Honestly, and as embarrassing as it sounds, Wiggins had a better has had a better career than Jabari Parker. Also, Jabari Parker's knees are like made of Swiss cheese. Um, I go back, even like go back, like like a lot of these guys, like Michael Carter Williams won rookie of the year. Mecca Okafor won rookie of the year. Don't mean shit. I'm still pissed about it because I want my guy to get an award because he had the dunk of the decade so far. But you know, whatever. It still annoyed me. Um, also, we talk about how the NBA has like a uh, NBA is like fucking the Suns over right now. Please. Oh like, my this god, is this is fucking bullshit. Like Adam it Silver, is. Adam Silver might as well have a I heart LeBron f the Suns for knocking him out tattoo on his forehead because this is ridiculous. I actually have a buddy. Who's a doorman in New York State? Used to be a doorman. Who's met Adam Silver? He goes he's the most awkward guy he's ever met. Don't doubt it, because he probably literally asked LeBron what to do for everything. I literally saw this this morning. A, a lot of my coworkers at NBA are big NBA guys, and they were asking me like, some of them listen to the show, some don't, but they still know I do the show. I'm like, what do you think about this? I'm like, it's fucking bullshit. LeBron's they've been kissing LeBron's ass for years. Davis Stern at least kept LeBron's ego in check. Adam Silver's let it run wild. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I think it's ridiculous just because they created so many excuses for LeBron, who wasn't vaccinated, and Chris Paul was vaccinated. Uh, yeah. It so really makes me angry. Off, Samir, but no, go ahead. Did you man. see what else they were saying? No. Right when Chris Paul was put on the COVID list, like, yeah, he's not vaccinated. My God. I can't believe it. They're out to get and him. And then it so came out he was vaccinated, and they didn't say anything. They're out to get him because he knocked the Lakers out. That's literally it. 
the, like Adam Silver is so bitter about like the, like because now he's like, oh my god, we'll have LeBron in the finals. What will we do? Um, um, watch your fucking ratings go up because people are like, oh, LeBron's on it. Cool. I am so I want a Suns Nets series so bad because I want to see because you know it, I, one of the two out of the three stars on that on that team are gonna play. I don't know whatever combination of the two out of three plus Blake Griffin who's like a sub star. And then you have the 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 Suns who literally could score baskets until the cows come home against them. I am so oh, for this. I'm watching every game of the NBA Finals because the Lakers aren't in it. Oh, fact. Yeah. And I had I'm a putting Laker. it on my TV upstairs, my TV downstairs, my phone, and my laptop, and my iPad, just so their ratings are higher. I love that. Um, I had a Lakers fan ask me today, one well, of my coworkers. He goes, "Why are you hating LeBron so much?" I'm like, because. He went to my boy Kobe's doorstep to try to win more rings. No, that's I not like, why. Oh, so I just don't like that. I just don't like the way he plays. I don't like the fact he like yeah, he tries I, to be the goat. I like he, like the he flopping. Does not try to be the goat. He says he's the goat. First oh yeah, time. which is cap. I mean, it's more cap than what they got in lids. I mean, seriously, it's. But, but also, he didn't go to LA to win more rings because if he really wanted to, he could have traded for Anthony Davis anywhere. He could have forced the team to do it. He went to LA. To try and win more rings, but also so he could be closer to Hollywood. And make a shitty remake of of um, Space Jam. That movie looks so bad. Oh, I'm not watching it. Kevin, I might like literally like drunkenly accidentally slip onto it on my butt on my brother in law's like HBO Max account. Because there's no way in hell I'm watching that sober. <laughs> uh hey, NSA, stop listening. I might pirate it to see how bad it is, but I'm not giving them money to watch it. Oh no, no fact. Chance. I might be using my own HBO Max account for that shit. I'll use somebody else's. I'm not like fuck that shit. Also, can I just say something as a sneaker? I want Parker Ainsworth's opinion on this. I'm gonna DM him after this. The LeBron 18 Space Jams look ugly as fuck, by the way. Holy hell. They look like some space age like mock Air Max. It looks so weird. The Jordan 11 Space Jams may be the, one of the cleanest, nice-looking sneakers of all time. For those of you who are kind of vague, everyone knows what the Jordan 11s look like. They have the patent leather on the toe box, everything else. They were the ones with the uh, all-black up top, blue blue uh, Jumpman, clear sole, white midsole. Clean as hell. One of the best sneakers ever made. LeBron 18 Space Jams look disgusting. Oh, uh, by the way, Trey's new shoes are fire. Oh, yes. No, they're gorgeous. I hate Adidas, but I love those shoes. Uh, let's. They're almost as good looking as Dame Lillard's and Donovan Mitchell. By the way, uh, Adidas Loki has like a great athlete list. Yeah, they've slowly gotten really good athletes. Like, this for those is who haven't seen them, but yeah, put them yeah, up. Yeah, you can. I'm just pulling them up. Oh, no. But basically, like, so, like, you guys know I love sneakerheads. I'm a big sneaker guy. I, you know, everyone's seen my, co- we put my collection up last year in the live stream. Um, yeah, those are fire, by the way. Two, um, they look like almost like some cotton, like some uh, like vanet, like some um, shaved ice kind of looking shit, which is so cool. Well, um, they're the ice trays. That which is awesome. Oh shit. Okay, so yeah, they're this, snow dice. Kevin, this reminds me of the roster oh from. Like, remember the All Adidas team in NBA Live 07? It was like KG, T Mac, Duncan, um, Jordan Howard, Damian Harris. Like it was like. I mean, Devin Harris. It was like I was say, what? Damian Harris. It was like an all. It was an all Adidas yeah. squad, and it was like a ninety-seven overall. If you like my one of my buddies is the West All Stars. I just used the all Adidas squad. I smoked him by thirty points in NBA o- o- NBA Live 07. because that team was broken. That had a huge roster spot back then. That was like MVP KG, MVP level Duncan, forty points in a quarter T Mac, and like. Dave, Devin Harris, who was still like an all star at that point, plus Jordan Howard from or Juwan Howard, whoever the one played for the Mavericks, I don't fucking know. Um, who was a great defensive player, but yeah, Edis like between Dame, Spider Mitchell, Trey Young, they have a great roster again. It's it's awesome. I love when I love when every single as much as I'm a Nike Jordan guy, every I love when every sneaker brand has a loaded roster of dudes. Because it just makes it so much more fun, and it makes the sneaker game so much more intricate. Like Zion is with Jordan, Jaws with Nike, Anthony Edwards with Adidas. So is Trey Young. So is Dame. So is Don Mitchell. Yeah, uh, and I think they do. Tatum's with Jordan. I, I love it. 
I think the NBA also does such a good job with that. Like, it's completely unique. Yeah. For, like, the NBA, because they built stars so well. Like, Anthony Edwards can have a shoe deal, and it's, like, a big deal. Or, like, you know, LaMelo, when he signed with I Puma, will like, that was buy a big deal. Because, Adidas. like, they could build guys from the get-go. I loved Andrew Wiggins' Adidas back in the day. They were so cool, but they were too clunky for me. Um, I really want Adidas to do a um, a signature shoe for – um. Mr. Edwards, because I will buy it. I never buy Adidas. I have one pair of boosts upstairs, and I literally wear them to hang out. But I will buy Anthony Edwards' Adidas tomorrow. No questions asked. I love. I think this kid is like just energy, like epiphany for the Timberwolves. I love it. So, yeah, but Trey Young sneakers look fire, though. I also love how the NBA is going to a low top almost everything. Like. Even Zion sneakers look like a very like mid to low kind of s- setup. I'm not a high top guy. I'm only high top for like casual shit. For anything athletic, it's all low to me. I like the freedom, ankle freedom. Yeah, me too. Like the the the, the those trays like look fantastic. I'll wear high tops when wearing like pants, but I will not wear high tops with shorts. I basically bought the same type of sneaker for the past like three years straight. <laughs> They're just like That's athletic good. trainers. Like, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, blocky shoe guy. You know, like oh Asics. god, you wear those, uh, you wear those old school like the clunky ones, the white girl clunky ones, the feelers with the like the no no, no. Like yeah. No, I'm an Asics things. guy. I'm oh, I'm a, I'm a I'm a nice, just stylish, clean dad shoe. It works with any outfit. Samir's gonna have like Nike Air Monarchs by the end of this episode. <laughs> No, those are a little too because they need to have some color to them. They got to pop. I'm an Air Max guy. Okay, I'm a big Air Max guy. I'm a big Vapor Max guy. Surprisingly, super comfortable. Well, you know what I, I can't get behind? I can't get behind the foam posits. People love I foam posits. I love my I foam posits. I have five pairs. I love them. I think they're too big. Oh no, they're they're also but they are big. But Samir, they are one of the most. If you ever get a chance to try a pair on, they're one of the most comfortable shoes you will ever wear in your life. Also waterproof. Waterproof, by the way, which is awesome. That is pretty awesome. Yeah, I stepped in a puddle. Pumps, I stepped in a puddle like three inches deep in New York City. No water got in. I was hype as hell. Wow. I just have some Air Max 270s. That's what Great I shoe. I so got the uh, the N7 edition. Oh, I love oh, that. I love that. They're colorway. black with like very light colored accents. I love that colorway. And also, money goes to the Native American tribes. So, good cause, oh, great cause. That's nice. Last pair of shoes I bought, um, I bought the Nike Pegasus thirty nines or thirty eights. Oh, pegs are nice. Pegs are probably my favorite. I in the gym, my buddies always make fun of me because I blow through sneakers so fast. I said they get. They said, "Dude, you have to find a sneaker that's Jared proof." The only sneaker that's ever been Jared proof is the Pegasus. I had the 35s, loved them, beat the snot out of them. So comfortable. Also, by the way, Nike Air Nike Air Zoom is the best cushioning system of all time. I don't want to hear anything else. No Vapor Max, no Boost. Shut up. It's Nike Zoom is the best. Dollar Tree flip flop sandal. Yes, insulation. dude. If the fucking like toe piece doesn't pop out, I don't want to wear it. Nice. Yikes. Right. Um, viewer questions? We don't have many this week. Eh, we'll entertain uh, them. From Kendrick. Hey. How are y'all going to feel when the Eagles finish last in their division? I'm going to feel great. This dude is literally trying I'm to gonna get I'm going to pop the champagne. I'm going to have myself an evening, draw a bubble bath, just have a great night. Kevin, yeah. what did I do to you? Seriously, why do you root for my misery? Um, I just don't like the. Oh, uh. I'm in a weird place. I said I wasn't gonna bag on the Eagles, and I had to be nice about them. But some things have changed in my life, maybe. But don't take it out on me. I'm not I'm taking it out on the Eagles. But that's then indirectly taking it out on me. Okay. Suck it up, Buttercup. Oh, my God. It's back to normal. Wow. Uh, anyway, Kendrick, you are really trying so hard to get banned from this show. I swear. Um, Kendrick, you know, come Kendrick on something that I will do is that I'll, I'll finally just take 
a deep breath of just sweet release and just uh, I don't even know, maybe even get Kendrick. Give, I think give someone a massage, we, or maybe they'll give a massage to me. If or when the Eagles oh, go to a place in Jupiter, find out where Bob Kraft went. Uh, if the now. Eagles win the division, I, I'm gonna roast. I I want Kendrick to do so, like he has to come on the show wearing an Eagles jersey. Just so if the Eagles like lose the division, we'll be seeing a lot of happy endings around here, around the corner. <laughs> I'll say that much. True. Fair. <laughs> we also have two questions that we missed in the past because no one brought it to my attention. I don't think. But best beer? I don't think we've answered that one. Oh, oh, no cap, right here. That was only like a month ago. Too hard ale. Bells, no question. It's on tap my wedding whenever that happens in 35,000 years, whatever. Give, give me some Abita Purple Haze. Oh, so good. Slaps. I love Abita so much. Line and Kugel Summer Shandy. Oh, I will also, sit, also slaps. I will sit in. I wish they made towers of Summer Shandy at the bar I go to. If you they could made, probably figure that out. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I could ask. However, I don't think it's something they they would be like prepared to do. I I feel like they might do it, but then they'd be like, "Yeah, that would be eighty dollars." Yeah, they'd be like, they charge you like the same as like the same for like same summer seasonal. They'd be like, "Okay, like this is a seasonal." What is it? It's like, isn't it like forty bucks? Well, how much is a tower of a Coors Light? Uh, for two or four people, because it's four. Uh, I think that's like is that forty? All right, when I go up to visit, can we do a couple of these towers? I'm so I just, right now. Honestly, I just really like milk. Like, they have milk, <laughs> and they have milk light. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard this. If you go, like, like 1%, like, you get even, like, you can still so you have, oh, like, skim. milk and then milk light, you know, that Dude, kind of thing. Milk uh, ultralight, Pat, that skim? Yeah. Oh, oh ultralight. Pat, by oh. the way, I have a question. Yeah. Do you want to come pick me up, go to a bar, and see if, like, it was a tower of lighting kugel? Uh, I can't this weekend, but next weekend, sure. <laughs> yeah. I meant right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. It's not happening well, apparently I have to drop off beer to our buddy Justin, so I'm going to be up soon, boys. <laughs> I went and oh, found I'm a- away that weekend. No, no. <laughs> I was going to hang out with my cousin and these knuckleheads. You can come by if you want. <laughs> nah, that's fine. Watch. I probably will be out of town that weekend just because that's how things go. Um, also, but now we're going to mix it up. We're going to throw a curveball. Ooh. Best imported beer. Ooh. And why is it Pacifica? That is the question. Modelo. Get the hell out of here with that. Pacifica is very good, though, but I love Modelo more. Pacifica is better. Oh, no, it is, but I love Mo- Modelo. so crushable. I love it. Also, it's just the cans. Also, come on. Do you have a fighting spirit? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? I, hey, Sp- hey, Sprite Cranberry, pipe down. You're underage. I honestly don't know what my favorite import is because, like, I do like a couple of German ones, but, like, also, too, like, Dos Equis is really good. Is Dos Equis even import? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Dos Equis is good, but I don't know. I feel like I have to pass on that one. I love uh, Pacifico, the... but I've had some bad hangovers from it. I haven't had it, but I think Snake Venom probably takes the cake. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need it, guys. <laughs> A okay. 67.5 ABV beer. Holy mother of God. I need, I need it. it. I don't think they import it, but if they do, it's the best imported beer. Import it to like Mexico, maybe, and then you have to go get it across the border. I don't know, like, except for legal reasons, I don't know why they import it from Scotland to Mexico to go get it from America. Maybe Canada. I don't know. Canada is basically in lockdown anyway. You can't get anything that's in that damn country. Um, Was next. That's it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to thank you for checking out the Corner Booth Live today, the Corner Booth pregame episode 56, the Lawrence Taylor, aka the greatest pass rusher of all time episode. I'm your amazing Sean Merriman episode. Yeah, I I will take. I apologize for in advance. I did not realize how horrible human being Sean Merriman was until Kevin offline told me what he did. And I was like, okay, I am in an awkward spot right now. Cause I loved him as a I kid. Mean, if it makes you feel any better, I was going to make a joke about Charlie Chaplin in a, uh, something I was writing. And then I remembered that he banged and proceeded to marry a 17 year old. So yeah, that was an interesting one. I remember learning that in class. Like, Ugh. they taught you about that in class. Well, it was a film class. Oh, in college, <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Well, I don't anyway. know why, but when you said that, I was thinking like, oh, when he was in like fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of yeah, little did you to? Yeah. What? Ah, public school. Did they also teach you how he was blacklisted by Hollywood for allegedly being a communist? God, yeah, the 20s. yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah. Anyway. Bullshit. Oh. Yeah. America, is a f- American history is always a fun time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the corner with pregame. I am your host, Jerry Clem, alongside my Bermuda um, traveling. Right hand man there, Mr. Kev. Who really, he's got to ch- he's got to chill out on me, man. Sometimes he goes too hard on me. Anyway, and our marketing wizard, Mr. Pat Donahue, and my amazing intern, Mr. Samir Singh. We will see you guys Tuesday. Enjoy your weekend. Dr- drink heavy. Drink responsibly. But responsibly, of course. Drink responsibly. Do not drink and drive, obviously. And, and enjoy drum. some milk today. Enjoy milk with cereal. Unless you're lactose. Out. Samir, are you discriminating against people with lactose intolerant? Yeah, Samir, that's <laughs> lactose intolerant. Folks. I mean, there's lactate, and honestly, just or you know, drink it and get over it. You know? Kevin, I think he's going timeout. Yeah, Samir, you're in timeout. <laughs> all right, ladies and gents, that's it. That's all. Peace out. Enjoy your weekend. Um, yeah, have fun. Later. Don't do math. Yeah, don't do math. Don't A do little math. cracks fine, but no math. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>